circuit and use them to make images instead of make electronics. And so that's what I was looking at. Um, so I apologize if this sound is going to start to sound a little bit like a technical lecture, but I thought I would explain just a little bit about how integrated circuits are made and how that uh, fabrication process lends itself perhaps to making the images. Um, the computer chips that are in your laptops and your iPhone are all built out of transistors. As a schematic, each one of these, each one of these schematic elements is a transistor. And basically, now these are, they're three-dimensional, although sometimes in the chip world we call it two and a half dimensional because they're very thin layers on top of the silicon substrate. So some of the layers of the chip are that human hair is roughly 100 microns thick. So the human hair is 100 microns, and I'm making lines that are a half micron. I'm making one two hundredth of a human hair's line width. Now modern chips, I'm using an ancient technology because it's cheap. Modern chips are actually 10 times smaller than that. So here's that same picture with a pesky piece of hair that has fallen into the process and lays across the chip. It's <laughs> an idea of the scale. Now here's a chip that some of my students made, and you can see about what's about to happen. They finished their chip and they realized they had a lot of empty areas, so they signed their names. <laughs> There's that hair again. It's falling across the chip. Now, how does this relate to screen printing? Or to printing at all? And I think it actually relates quite a bit to screen printing because the, the physical process of fabricating an integrated circuit is very much like screen printing. It's screen printing, you make a mask, or you put a photo, um, photo emulsion on the screen, you expose onto that and harden it up in certain places, you wash it away, and then you use that as a stencil for applying the ink. This is essentially exactly the way that chips are made, except chips are really, really small. To make an integrated circuit, you have a big wafer of silicon, you put a layer of photoresistant material on it, you expose those different layers that are drawn in different colors onto that, onto that uh, photoresistance, harden it up, and use the photoresist as a mask for patterning the layers that make the electronics. So it's like screen printing, except that I'm using aluminum metal layers instead of ink. Maybe I can draw pictures. So this um, image is a reductive wood path that I made in 06. And then this is a version of that reductive wood path that I put on a chip. This image is about 350 microns tall. You can only see it, obviously, through a microscope. There's that hair. You can get some idea of the scale of that, of that image. So very quickly, the, the steps for fabricating integrated circuits look like this. The first thing, so this silver stuff down here is silicon. The first thing we do is we oxidize it. Turns out when we expose silicon to an oxygen atmosphere, it grows silicon dioxide, glass. So silicon dioxide is a wonderful insulator. You grow that on the silicon. Then apply a, a thin sheet of aluminum across the whole thing by a process called sputtering, which is exactly what you think it is. It sputters aluminum across the silicon. Then we'll put photoresistant material on the top, exposed through a mask under that photoresist. Then we'll wash away the unhardened photoresist, and then everything underneath that photoresistant material will be protected. We'll run this through an acid bath and etch away all the aluminum that's not protected by the photoresist. Then with a separate solvent, we can get rid of the photoresist and end up with an aluminum picture, very much like a screen printed picture, except that it's been screen printed by sputtered aluminum onto silk. Now just to show that this is not something I came up with yesterday, the very first picture I did on a chip, this is from 1983, uh, pretty crude. It's uh, supposed to be my ski trail down the mountains in 1983. Um, this is a chip I, I got back in December. Now, obviously, there's some electronics here, which was the whole point of making the chip. But there's some <coughs> other regions that were seemed to be a perfect little blank palette for making some pictures. So I select some things off to the side. Another interesting thing about the metallization layers on the circuits is they're very, very thin metal. So they look different depending on how the light is polarized that you're looking at. So this is the same view through a microscope with a different polarization filter, and you get different apparent colors. This, this is just aluminum, so it has no, no particular color. It's hard to say what the real color is at that feature size. So depending on how you polarize it, you get different 
parent columns through the microscope. Um, this is a close-up of Mr. JJ. Um, this is a dust spec we've got used in the processing. And this is made up of three different layers of metal. This, this shiny stuff is the very top layer. And then we're looking through the silicon dioxide insulation layer to layer number two, and through two layers of silicon dioxide insulation down to layer number one. <coughs> so think of three sandwich layers of aluminum. This is, uh, this is my dog Stripes, um, who likes to sleep in his chair. And I still have a picture of him on the chip as well. This is the second test chip I got back in December. Um, it has some of my images over here. It has another more abstract image here that I'll talk about in a second. So when I started working with more what I would call really, you know, trying to make real images on the chip rather than simply signing my name, um, I started working with Al Denier, who's a professor of um, art at the University of Utah. She works in a number of different ways, but one of the things that she does are these wonderful wax encaustic layered graphite and wax um, images that are very organic looking, they have a texture, they have a depth. And I thought that sort of depth of image might transfer well to these layers where you can see sort of halfway through some of these layers. So what we did is we took one of her encaustic graphite drawings and we simply thresholded some of the, um, some of the layers here and tried to translate that into something on the chip. Now, we're not trying to get a photographic rendering of this on the chip. We're just trying to use this as inspiration for something which will look different on the chip that has some relation to it. So this is that spot is another processing flaw that had nothing to do with the image. But this is how that image translated into these three different layers of metal. Eventually, what we'd like to understand is more about the optical properties of this metal, so that we can work directly towards the chip image and not start from painted image and the chip, but work directly on the chip. And again, it looks very different depending on what polarization you use, so you can think about, like, <coughs> like this one, it has more of a separation of color and apparent color between the different layers, but they all have an interesting, interesting look to it. So that's really it. This is, I think, very cool stuff. <coughs> you need a microscope to see it. The chip is here. These are the two chips, and if you want to come up and look at it, you're welcome to. The chip itself, you probably can't see it except even if you're in the front row, the chip itself is inside that package. It's three millimeters on one side and half one and a half millimeters on the other side. I'll leave up a couple of websites in case you're interested. And I think um, what we'll do now is we'll reassemble the team here and we'll have time for some questions and discussion. Thank you very much.